But let's move on to the five takeaways. We're going to take a look at five things to take away from the game. 2-0 loss to Manchester City. And the first one is new formation. Yeah, and Ange definitely changed things up a bit yesterday in terms of how we set up. Obviously, Van de Ven played in kind of a left-back, kind of uh, centre-back kind of hybrid, more of like a back three kind of thing. We played a false nine um, as well with Madison and Saar kind of rotating the central areas, dropping into midfield and adding the extra man. And it led to a, a very uh, accomplished performance on the ball. And in fact, it was only the second time this whole season that um, Man City have uh, been out-possessioned, essentially. The only other time being at Anfield early in the season where they did also, uh, they, they got a draw in that game and um, were lucky probably to get a point. But it just goes to show the potential of this Ange Postecoglou system and this team where they can he can turn up against one of the best teams in Europe, um, adjust the system and dominate the ball and actually look really good with the ball in terms of how we were creating chances and how we were hurting Man City as well. I think we outpassed them as well, which is one of the only times Man City have been uh, outpassed uh, over 90 minutes. So that was really, really encouraging. And I think it's it's definitely shows to me um, green shoots uh, for next season when it comes to uh, how this team can progress, which is unfortunate that it didn't quite click in terms of getting the win yesterday. But um, definitely this kind of new formation is something I would like us to see in a few more bigger games maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people have, us have been saying, it, everyone's been saying, it. I don't think anyone hasn't been saying it in terms of the way Ange Postacoglu can adapt and if he can adapt um, his formation, if he can adapt style of play. And I think he did that yesterday. A shame it comes too late in the season where, you know, there's not m nothing much left to fight for. But there is signs in that game to look forward to for next season in terms of, you know, Ange says he wants to go for a title race. I still think that's going to be a bit too far for us going to next season. But it's definitely going to show different avenues where we can play against different sets of teams. And it's just a shame that he hasn't shown that throughout the season. Mm. Um, number two, we're going to go and look at Dragushin Impresses. Yeah, and uh, a first start for him, I think, since Luton at home, uh, where I thought, um, obviously, he had a fairly OK game there, but didn't really uh, impress too much on his um, first couple of starts but I thought he came in in this one and really showed a really um, good side to his game and against a really obviously one of the toughest oppositions I thought really impressed on the day uh, made four tackles two interceptions which is more than uh, anyone else on the pitch won six of his eight ground duels won one out of one aerial duels as well competed really well and you've got to remember he's still only 21 he's such so young for a center back and um still learning his game but clearly he's got a lot of potential he looked didn't look out of place whatsoever playing center back next to Romero and Ange said um after the game uh you know it's fair to say we're looking at Dragushin how he played yesterday that if he was available for us first half of the season we probably would have been in a different position mm. so um it's a shame we didn't get that center back in earlier but I thought it was a really accomplished display from Dragushin yeah can't agree more I couldn't agree more I think Dragushin really impressed me yesterday because I don't think we've seen anyth anything close to those levels from what, um, in the last couple of performances or the only couple of performances he's had in a Spurs shirt. And this is against the toppers opposition he has played. So, you know, he just needed a bit of time, I guess, to maybe get to grips with uh, the Premier League, get to grips with the way we like to play, get to grips with Atropos de Koglu. Um, and maybe his, um, his counterpart, his uh, defensive counterparts as well in... in you know, building up that kind of relationship. And I thought we saw that yesterday. And when you're looking at a reason why Dragushin hasn't played more over the past couple of weeks, particularly since the doggies come in. You can't really make a case for it because since Van, you go Van der Ven left back and Dragushin centre back, which we've all been calling for, or some people have been calling for, for for a while. I mean, after seeing that display, it's just like, why didn't you try that before? Yeah, and that, that's, that's the only annoying thing, but um, very encouraging going into next season. Hopefully he gets more game time and we can see more level of performance like we did yesterday. Yeah, let's move on to number three, and that is Madison Shines in new role. Yeah, and I thought um, him playing this false nine role really um, was helping bring the best out of him. And he seemed to be a lot more all action in this one than he has been in recent weeks. And I thought uh, he was really, really impressive. He had four key passes, more than anyone else on the pitch, but was also um, very combative in the center. He won seven of his eight ground duels, won two tackles, two interceptions, and also won four fouls for the team as well, which is uh, more than anyone else on the pitch and getting us into decent position. So I thought Madison um, had a really, really strong showing and it was um, back to one of his better performances, I felt. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like these uh, Madison performances have been growing in the past couple of weeks, particularly the last game um, against Burnley in the second half and now this game here. You're really starting to see Madison uh, 
not I wouldn't say get back to those levels of the first 10 games but definitely get out of those rut the rut that he was in uh, post injury so it's good to see him get back to full fitness it's good to see him up those performance levels but I still think he's got so much more to give and so much uh, more levels to go so that's just the exciting thing about James Madison let's move on to number four and that is Decky up front yeah, and Decky obviously came on on 55 minutes and played a new role. And this was central striker, which we haven't seen him play that role before. Um, we've seen actually he'd prefer Brennan Johnson in that role to Decky. But I thought Decky came on and actually provided a different kind of that was able to hang on to the ball, was able to take it with his back to goal and also create a few chances for himself, which he did on a couple of occasions. Um, and another day, he, he could have had two goals. He did miss two big chances um, once coming off the bench. And I thought he was a nuisance for Man City. He actually threw his weight around a bit, used his physical physicality um i thought they actually uh, struggled a bit with his physicality on a couple of occasions where he looked second best to get the ball and was then end up uh, getting it um so i thought that was really really encouraging so i'll be interested to see if uh and uses Decky in that role going forward. Yeah, um, I think he should because he gives us something that no other player in that that he, we are going to play up front can offer. He's just that pure physical presence, that much more physical than a Richarlison, more than Sonny, uh, more than Madison in that role as well. So I think um, he did it to a really, really high standard. He was creating chances for himself. Man City couldn't really deal with him at times when um, he was in full flow. So um, I, I love that performance from Decky, and I've been heavily critical of Decky this season. Um, and that was a massive step in the right direction. And maybe um, I've been asking the question, where does he fit into this squad? Where does he fit in an Ange Postacoglu system? Well, maybe we've just found it. Mm. Um, and let's move on to the fifth and final takeaway, and that is Europa awaits. Yeah, and after yesterday's defeat, obviously that does confirm Aston Villa will be playing Champions League football next season Tottenham will not be in the competition um, and we only have basically Europa League uh, to confirm it's not quite 100% confirmed yet we need a point uh, we do need a point but um, we do either need a point or if Newcastle and Chelsea both drop points in midweek then also we can are Man U out of it? Have, yeah Man U out of it um, Man U and out of it yeah uh, yeah, they, they, they could win the FA Cup, but that doesn't mean they they take it away from us. Yeah. They take it away from six. So, um, new, both, both Newcastle and Chelsea drop points in midweek against Man United and Brighton, respectively. Then we'll have it confirmed without having played a game. If they both win, then we're going to need a point on the final day against Sheffield United just to make sure, because Chelsea and Newcastle both have superior goal difference to us at the moment. So if we were to lose, in fact, we could finish as low as seventh. Because if we were to lose and Chelsea and Newcastle were to win um, both their games, um, then we would finish seventh uh, if we were to lose to Sheffield United. But I mean, surely we ain't losing to Sheffield United. Well, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you would like to think not. Um, but so uh, we'll wait and see what happens. But Europa League is virtually confirmed at this point. To be fair, at Tottenham, we only just about scraped past Sheffield United. We did only two one. Yeah, you're right. No, but I can't. I can't th sit here and think we're gonna we're gonna drop points to a wow, Sheffield so United that's already miss down. Out, well, we could technically miss out on Europe altogether if Man United. We need win a the point FA at Cup. Sheffield United. We ain't missing out on Europe, surely. If Man United win the FA Cup and we finish seventh, that would be we wouldn't. No do Europe. Europe. Yeah, because <laughs> six will be Conference League. Wow! Imagine that. Yeah, I just can't see it happening. No, I, I gotta believe that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, but that is your five takeaways from the game yesterday.